Welcome to the Mike's Instructor here at Again Faster. Today Sam and I are going to take you through the overhead squat. Now the principal point that we want to make here besides giving you the points of performance is this. Uh, the overhead squat is not terribly functional in and of itself. There's no instance outside the gym where you're going to take something in a snatch grip, put it above your head and squat it. But that's not really the point. The point is that we want to demand the most midline stabilization out of the athlete that we possibly can. When we get that load overhead and get it very far away from the athlete's hip, the torque on the shoulders and the hip is tremendous. If the athlete's able to resist this torque, if they're able to overhead squat well, they'll be able to resist anything that would try and flex that midline in a range of athletic activities, whether it's in the weight room or outside. So we're really using this purely to train midline stability. That said, let's take them through the points of performance. Now, Sam's gonna unrack this bar using a behind the neck snatch grip push jerk, and uh, that brings us to our first point, the grip. So before you even come out, we'll notice that Sam is in a snatch grip. Uh, in Sam's case, she's about eight, nine inches outside of her shoulder, and she's gonna unrack it and step back. Directly before this video in the series, uh, you can watch one on the behind the neck snatch grip push jerk, but Sam's just gonna jump it up and push it straight up. This position is the starting position for the overhead squat. We'll notice that if you drew a straight line from the end of the bar down through Sam's body, it would intersect her shoulder, her hip, and her heel. Sam's squat stance is going to be at shoulder width. Her weight is going to be, of course, on her heels. Her shoulders are active as she pushes that bar up, and as she descends, she sits back and down onto her heels. And drive back up, back and down. Try it back up and go ahead and rack it. So Sam will bring it down behind the neck and walk it in. Perhaps the most crucial thing to notice here uh, is that the bar is going to stay over the center of Sam's foot throughout this movement. So we'll take a look at that. Okay? Uh, if that bar deviates fore or aft, in front or behind the middle of her foot, uh, it's going to put a lot of undue strain on the shoulder girdle. At the same time, uh, we want to make sure that the torso stays upright, and we'll address that in a moment, but let's take a look at that bar path now. So again, Sam's going to unrack it in the same method. She goes behind the neck on the traps. She's going to jump it up and press up. We'll see that in the name of midline stabilization, her shoulders are very active. She continues to push it up. The chest is up. Lower back is arched. She sits back and down, and now watch the end of that bar in relation to the middle of her foot. It's almost like the bar moves up and down, straight up and down in a slot. Okay, and back down. And drive up. Nice, and you can rack it. You may notice some of the micro adjustments that Sam is making as she pushes that bar back and forth slightly to make sure that it stays directly over the center of the foot. Now, of course, as the load gets larger, uh, her ability to keep it directly over the center of the foot becomes more and more and more imperative. Uh, the other thing that we really need to look at in the performance of the overhead squat is the idea that we want the spine in compression. That means that we want that load essentially bearing straight down through the athlete's spine in the same direction as gravity. If that athlete squats and has the torso canted forward significantly, what we're going to see is that they'll be required to push the bar back. When they have to push the bar back, it's going to put a lot of strain on the shoulders. It's also going to put the spine into rotation instead of compression. So Sam, I actually want you to do a bit of an immature squat this time. Okay, I want you to camp forward slightly and push that bar back. Um, Sam has a great deal of flexibility and she's able to stack herself vertically under the bar, but the vast majority of athletes and, and clients are not gonna be able to do this. When they squat, they're inevitably going to be tipped forward. This necessitates that to keep the bar over the center of the foot, they're gonna have to push the bar back. So let's take a look at that. So I still want that good jerk. She drives it up. We're going to see that hip go back and down and that torso come forward slightly. You see Sam now has to push the bar back. And this is going to be much more likely to be what you see. Sam, it's more difficult, right? Now, do one right. Okay, She keeps that chest up, keeps that torso stacked much more vertically, and drives up. And you can go ahead and rack it. 
the, the difficulty uh, differential between those two is, is substantial, right? Yeah, now, uh, it's going to be based on uh, a lot on the athlete's flexibility in the hip girdle, their ability to get upright. So if you're finding that you're having difficulty with your overhead squat because you're leaning forward and driving that bar back, which you have to do to keep it over the center of your foot, uh, odds are that you need to go back, work on that air squat, getting that hip girdle open and more upright. And we have another video in this series called Fixing the Squat that'll give you some, some tools uh, to do that. Um, so now I want to talk about the midline stability component a little more in depth. Uh, and it's a pretty easy concept. Uh, the idea is one of torque. Uh, torque is the tendency of uh, an object to rotate around a fixed point of rotation. If the lever arm, which is the distance from the point of rotation, which for this athlete is the hip, and the point of force, which is the bar, is high, in other words, long, there's a lot of distance between that rotation and that point of force, the tendency of this thing to rotate is very high. Okay? If that bar is closer, let's imagine you're in like a front rack position, the tendency of rotation is smaller because it's closer to the point of rotation. And finally, let's imagine that you put that bar down at waist level, the tendency for rotation around the hip or it to pull that athlete out of extension uh, is very minimal. Let's put this in plain English. Okay, imagine that I ask you to change the tire on a, on a Mack truck, right? And all I give you is a crescent wrench with a handle this long. Your ability to get that lug nut off, to, to turn that off with that handle that long uh, is gonna be minimal, right? Now imagine now we take an eight foot pipe and we slot it onto the end of that crescent wrench and we take you all the way out to the end of it and you pull down on it, right? It's gonna be much, much easier to pull down on. We have to, at the same time, knowing that this force is far away in the overhead squat and it's trying to maximize torque, we need to minimize that torque by keeping you as upright as possible, right? Because the closer you get to horizontal, the more that torque is going to be aided by gravity, the more it's gonna pull you out of extension, okay? So let's just take a look at this one more time and our major points of performance, okay? Sam is going to, behind the neck, snatch grip, push jerk this up with active shoulders. She's going to drive it over her head, keeping her chest up and her abs tight. Her weight's gonna be on her heels as her hip goes back and down. She's gonna keep her torso as upright as possible and drive back up. And go ahead and rack it. Now, the better your underlying air squat, the more you are able to stay vertical, the easier this is going to be. Of course, knowing that we always, always, always have to keep that bar over the center of the foot. This is an incredibly valuable exercise for midline stabilization, and your inability to do it exactly will describe your need to do it. If you find that you're not good at these, that you're challenged with a PVC pipe with a 45-pound bar, work on that underlying squat but also get under this bar, get that practice in, and one of these days will be nice and vertical like Sam is. Good job, Sam.